If you're a regular viewer of my channel, then you'll know that I almost exclusively use Zigbee devices for my smart lights, switches, and sensors. Recently, I've been looking for some smart wired light switches to make my ceiling lights smart without having to replace all the bulbs. I really haven't been that impressed with the designs and the functionality of the Zigbee devices that I've found, and I don't want to go with Wi-Fi if I can avoid it. But I have noticed some really nice Z-Wave options on the market. The problem is that I don't have a Z-Wave network set up here at home. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to learn a bit more about what Z-Wave is, how it works, and why you might want to consider using it in your smart home. That's what I'll be covering in this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to use one of these Z-Wave USB controllers and a system called Z-Wave JS together with Home Assistant to add Z-Wave smart devices and create automations. Z-Wave. What? It's pronounced Z-Wave, not Z-Wave, would you? Z-Wave is a wireless home automation technology similar to Zigbee that lets your smart devices communicate with a smart home hub or system. The technology was first developed by a Danish company in 1999, and as it became more popular, it spurred a bunch of smart home device manufacturers to get together and form the Z-Wave Alliance. The Alliance, which is now a non-profit organization, has a charter to promote the use of Z-Wave technologies, approve and maintain the Z-Wave standard, and to manage a certification system that ensures that all devices that have a Z-Wave logo work with each other. That's one of the superpowers of Z-Wave. Every Z-Wave device is guaranteed to work with every other Z-Wave device, regardless of which company actually manufacture it. There are, at the time of recording this video, over 4,000 certified Z-Wave devices that all work together. This happens because every company that wants to slap a Z-Wave logo on the box of their product needs to pay a yearly membership fee to join the Z-Wave Alliance and have each product certified, which probably costs another fee. These membership fees start at $10,000 per company per year to manufacture a Z-Wave device. And these certification costs mean that Z-Wave devices are often more expensive than a comparable Zigbee or Wi-Fi based alternative. But at least you know that they're all going to work with each other. And this has a knock-on effect too. It means that all of your Z-Wave devices, regardless of who made them, can speak with each other to create a really robust mesh network. Z-Wave, just like Zigbee, creates a mesh network which means that you can extend the range and reliability of the network by adding more devices, and they will relay the messages between each other to the main controller. Most mains-powered Z-Wave devices can act as a repeater device. The network takes care of routing the messages via the best available path through the network, so it's incredibly robust as well. If one of the repeater devices goes offline for some reason, the Z-Wave network can heal itself and reroute the messages via other devices that are in range. These signals are sent on a wireless frequency of around 800 to 900 megahertz, but it does vary slightly country to country. That does mean it's super important that you buy a Z-Wave USB controller and devices that are designed for your country and region. If you're buying from a local supplier, then you're not likely going to have any problems as they will hopefully be selling devices designed for your region. But if you're buying devices off AliExpress or from other overseas retailers, make sure that you buy ones that work in the frequency that your region is certified for. If you run your Z-Wave network on a frequency other than what has been approved for use in your country, it may actually be illegal. The main advantage of the lower 800 to 900 megahertz frequency is that the signals are more likely to transmit through walls, and it's a relatively quiet frequency range when compared to the ones that other smart home wireless technologies use. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and Zigbee all operate around the 2.4 gigahertz range, which means that all of your smart home devices using those technologies will find it more difficult to hear each other as they're essentially trying to yell over the top of each other. Z-Wave is also a very low latency network, so if you press a Z-Wave switch, you can have it turn on a Z-Wave light within milliseconds. In my testing, it works lightning fast. But on the flip side, it's a low bandwidth frequency range, so it's only really good for transmitting small amounts of data. This is perfectly fine because the types of data you're usually sending are just signals saying light turn on, light turn off, it's 23 degrees in here, the door just opened. You're not going to be using it to transmit HD video or music like you can with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It's also a very low powered network. A battery powered Z-Wave device can go to sleep when it's not in use, so the battery can last over a year in some cases. This is why only mains powered devices act as repeaters. It uses more power to relay messages around in the network, and the devices can't do that when they're asleep. Z-Wave networks now support encryption too, so devices theoretically communicate in secret, and it's supposed to stop hackers from interfering with your smart home devices. The Z-Wave network is local to your house as well, so if someone did want to hack into the network, they would need to be parked out the front of your house, or be somewhere in range of the network itself. 
The theoretical range of a normal Z-Wave device is allegedly 100 meters, but in practice it will be a lot less than that in your house because of all the walls and other shit in the way. There's a recommendation out there to add a Z-Wave repeater every 9 meters or so, and that again is one of the benefits of having a mesh network. You can add up to 232 devices in a single Z-Wave network, but there's some way of bridging multiple networks together if you need more than that. A new long-range Z-Wave standard has recently been released, and that can apparently span many miles in distance and supports up to 4,000 nodes on a single network. That could be really useful if you wanted to create a smart farm, or if you've got a lot of land with buildings that are far apart. Each Z-Wave network has a unique network ID, which means you could technically run two different Z-Wave networks in your house and they would remain totally separate. The network ID is usually automatically generated when you create the network. To add devices to your Z-Wave network, it needs to be included. That's the term that Z-Wave used for adding or pairing a device into your network. Usually you just put your network into inclusion mode, which means devices are allowed to join. Then you either scan a QR code of the device or press a pairing button on it to allow it to join the network. You can then remove a device in a similar way if you no longer want it to be part of the network. The device associations are actually stored on the USB stick itself. So you may need to create a new network ID or clear out the associations in some way if you're reusing a secondhand USB Z-Wave controller. Each Z-Wave network can only have one primary controller, but there is support for secondary controllers which can take over from the primary controller if needed. I personally have no idea how that works, but it sounds like something that can be used to increase redundancy and make the network even more fault tolerant. And that's about all I've learned about Z-Wave over the past couple of weeks. In the next video in this series, I'll be showing you how to add Z-Wave support to your Home Assistant using Z-Wave JS, how to include some new Z-Wave devices into your network, and then how to use them in some simple automations. I'll be showing you both the Z-Wave JS add-on for those of you running Home Assistant OS, and also the Docker container version for those of us running Home Assistant container. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, and then together we can make your home smarter.